Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. Tells you we're back every day. Uh, it's good to be back. Um, we're going to get into, a, uh, you know, it's a loaded weekend. We're going to get into a fight that I think could be fight of the year. Uh, but before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow Quick Hits on all forms. Uh, follow 3D Boxing uh, blog on all forms of social media. Um, also, please subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene. Uh all proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. Going to be down in the Rio Grande Valley this weekend for the Austin Trout comeback fight. Uh, we're going we're to get into that as well um, on another episode. Um, but let's let's start with, um, you know, like I said, this is a loaded, absolutely loaded weekend uh, of boxing. Um, it's the best weekend we've had in a while. Um, you got Terrence Crawford in a, in a fight no one cares about. You got... TV Lopez in a fight. I think he'll win. He should win. Uh, but but I, I think will be really, really, really interesting. Um, those are the two headline cards. Um, I also wanted to get into what I think is going to be the fight of the weekend. Also could be the fight of the year. And that's uh, the IBF featherweight champ, um, Josh Warrington. Uh, against Luis Alberto Lopez. Um, Josh Warrington, look, he's not a puncher. So when I say this, you guys are going to laugh. But I, <laughs> he's got more power. I'll put it this way. He's got more power than his eight knockouts suggest, right? He can hit a little bit, right? He's got at least respectable power. I, I don't know why he doesn't get really any knockouts at all. Uh, but he knocked out Kiko Martinez. Uh, well, he stopped him on cuts. Um, he got... A knockout before uh, his first um, his first fight after the uh, the Galahad uh, split decision. Uh, so I'm not even gonna try to say that name. Um, he he rocked Frampton a few times. He wobbled him. Like he's got a little bit of pop. I'm not I'm not saying he's gonna knock out Lopez. He's not. Um, but his power's a little bit better than his record suggests. <clears throat> and. Um, but it's not enough to scare his opponent off, obviously. Uh, Luis Alberto Lopez is a really, really, really fun, really unconventional fighter. Um, he, he looks flawed. like He looks easy to hit, but he's just a lot better. He's a lot better than he, than, uh, he looks, right? Like, he's good. He's got pop. He can hit. Um, he's really come from nowhere. You know, like I said, his style is unconventional. Uh, but he's a two-fist by the power in two fists. He throws punches from awkward angles. He looks like he's easy to hit, but he's a lot more difficult to hit than he is. Um, Lopez is a guy that really emerged from nowhere. Uh, if you go all the way back, I think it was, was it 2018 or it had to be 2018. Uh, when he fought Ray Jimenez, um, he got the win there. That was on a – that was 2019. It was February 2019. I apologize. Uh, so in February 2019, he got this win over Ray Jimenez on a Roy Jones card that was uh, you know streamed on the UFC Fight Pass. It's kind of the first we ever saw of him. Uh, he came back two and a half months later to fight Ruben, uh, Ruben Villa. He came up just short in a really, really, really close competitive decision. He was cut uh, in round four, but he fought well, and he, and he dropped a really, really close decision to Rubia just a couple months later after the Jimenez, after he upset Jimenez. Um, that was in 2019. He comes back. He gets uh, two up win, two up win, you know, two up win, three two up wins to close out 2019, and then he gets another big in, in all of Mexico. He gets another big chance. Uh, in, in the bubble uh, against Andy Vences, um, and he upsets Andy Vences, who's someone in the top rank thought highly, really highly of. Um, fights another tune-up fight about eight, nine months later, you know, trying to stay busy during the whole pandemic thing. Then he gets his big shot. 
uh, September of 2021, just over a year ago in Arizona, he fights Gabe Flores. And I mean annihilates Gabe Flores in 130. So he's not even fighting in his actual weight class. He goes up to 130. And look, he, Lopez is a really big 126 pounder, okay? I, I don't think he's necessarily undersized, but he's fighting – a weight class that's not his, his best weight class. 126 is his best weight class. He goes up, he fights 20 0 Gabe Flores. I mean, absolutely surlax him. Um, I, I had it 190, beats him, you know, beats him, just dominates him every single round of the fight. Two of the judges scored it 100 to 90. Um, and that really set him up. That really set him up for, for what was, you know, online for him. And that was a fight with Isaac Lowe, undefeated again, fight with Isaac Lowe. Um, and again, Lopez comes through, uh, scores a seventh round knockout, knocks him down in the first round, um, knocks him down in the second round, uh, and then KOs him with a body shot uh, in the seventh round, I want to say. Uh, then he's taken a couple fights. So he, he beat uh, a couple easy fights, stay busy fights in the interim so far in 2022 as he's been waiting for this opportunity. Uh, he fought on um, – Well, it, it was the Michaela Mayer card and Jennifer Hahn. I think that was back in April. Uh, he fought on that card. It was a really easy tune-up fight. And then uh, he fought uh, – I've seen Vargas. It's a name um, in, in this, this past August, and that was uh, the Emmanuel Navarrete card when Navarrete fought with uh, Eduardo Baez. He fought on that card as well. Um, just tune-up fights to get ready for this fight, just staying busy, uh, get ready for this Warrington fight. He's going to have to bring the fight to him. And Warrington's going to stand in there and, and hit with him. Um, you know, this is crazy. Uh, you know, go back to 2019, just three years ago. Jimenez, you know, he came in as an opponent to fight Ray Jimenez, who's 18 to 1. Uh, Jimenez had one very, very controversial loss um, in uh, in Puerto Rico to Christopher Diaz. You go back to that fight, everyone thought Jimenez beat Christopher Diaz. So this was a guy, you know, out of Dallas where a lot of people thought, okay, Jimenez. Jimenez had a path. Jimenez, you know, was legitimate. He could get into contention. Um, close fight, competitive fight, and Lopez beats him. You know, uh, it gets stopped after the eighth round due to a cut, um, really bad cut. I was ringside for that fight, um, and Lopez just uh, was a little bit better that night. And then, you know, that that's kind of led us to where we are now. It's just crazy to think that, you know, this guy that was pulled in as an opponent, for a Roy Jones Jr. promoted fighter at the time, uh, is now on the precipice of winning a world title. And, it, I, you know, I kind of think he's going to do it. You know, I, I talked to him that day. He's one of the, one of the, one of the nice guys you're going to meet in the sport. Um, I I don't know what you guys are thinking. I, I, I think this is a great fight. Um, I, I think Lopez hits a lot harder. And I, I, I think Warrington is going to be there. I think Warrington is going to trade with him. I think this is going to be a fun fight. I think it's going to look similar to the Frampton fight, but I think Lopez is, is, uh, is young, sharp. He's a little tricky, unconventional. I think this is going to be a slugfest. Um, and I, I, I think that really favors Lopez. I'm not saying Warrington can't win. I'm not saying that Lopez is going to wash him or Lopez is going to dog wash him. I just think well, Lopez is really, really underrated. I think he's a lot better than he looks. Right? I think if you're scouting him, you see a bunch of weaknesses, and the weaknesses are there. But it's hard to capitalize on him uh, because he's so tricky, and uh, he, he, you know, he cracks. He throws punches from angles. Um, I, 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 you know, my money is on this on on two things: this being a fight of the year candidate, and I, I, I think Louis Lopez is going to win this fight. Um, let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. But of all the fights this weekend, you got Crawford, you got uh, Tifimo, you got a busy, busy weekend. Um, I, I really, really think that this is going to be, you know, it's not the headline fight. It's not the big money fight. It's not, you know, the fight that's going to garner all the attention. But I, I do think that this is the best fight of the weekend. As far as action and competitiveness, uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you guys are familiar with Lopez? So you've seen him on ESPN a few times. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Let me know. Give me your predictions. Um, let me know what you think of the fight. Um, it is December sixth. Uh, oh, oh, please follow uh, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, all forms of social media. Um, follow us. Uh, share, like, and subscribe. Um, also follow us on 
Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Subscribe to that channel. All proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is December 7th, 2022. From Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.